What's going on, everybody? It is Luke, and today we're going to be going over the 2020 P&L profit and loss. Uh, you know they didn't call it that anymore, but <laughs> I do. Sounds better. It's easy to understand. But I'm going to be going over a couple of cool things. So my previous video would have been about Q4 specifically, mentioning slightly what I'm going to be mentioning here. But <coughs> interestingly enough, it's always best to look at your Amazon uh, journey yearly because you have to experience all the different parts of the year to get a good overall picture of one cycle. One year is one cycle, start to finish. You don't start something and look at the results before you finished. Yeah. And so that's why you need to really look at it in terms of averages uh, and break it down. And once you get, you know, if you can build up a really good personalized report like this, uh, even though it's not really a report, it's just in data in a box, whatever. Not really. I don't see it as a report because it's not got like loads of sum ifs and what, you know, all those Excel things. Just literally that equals <laughs> times. But anyway, um, we can just see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually reveal this first, which is my Amazon non-related income as well. I mean, that cashback is kind of related, but not related to direct sales. And my voice is going a little bit as well, which is really upsetting. So I made 16,000. £16,800, basically, um, on various things, break it down, <coughs> the prepping card, I don't even know what that is, but it's there, I must have done some sort of prep or something, oh yeah, I used to do some prep in my back in the day, I can't even remember that, that seems like a decade ago, uh, affiliate, uh, coaching, courses, pay and some stuff, you know, that could be, that could be Elite Sellers Academy mixed in with uh, direct one-to-one -one coaching, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, obviously, cashback is pretty obvious. Perhaps you video, blah, blah, blah. Cashback, top. Cash back. Um, we're going to leave this for a minute. This is going to be my VAT. So, this is basically you know, the VAT that I've shown through the month. So, you know, the VAT, the VAT that I've added here will be literally shown here. But you can see that anyway. Because, um, no, I'll leave it. Because what I wanted to show here is the PL VAT, which is like, you know, I've, I've treated every month as its own self-contained like setup. So when I've, every product in, in that month, I've shown my profit and loss for, I've shown, I've taken into consideration the VAT that I claim back on those products and the VAT I pay, which then gives me an overall VAT. That would be a representational amount for that month. But in real life, you do not pay your VAT and claim it back at the same time. So, it could fall in different months but that gets messy because then you can't really see you know it gets really confusing so i've tried to pre present it to say if you just for one month and that's all you did sold that amount you would then pay that vat on a bit of a mix of zero percent products and five percent and da 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 all those kind of things and 20 percent, you know and that but but obviously everyone's gonna be different a lot of people would be double that because <coughs> they might sell just 20 percent vat products i sell zero five and uh, as of 2020, I do. Now I won't because I think the 5% is gone. Uh, and so the actual VAT I paid will be different to what those months VATs are pay showing because of that example, because you can do a lot of leveraging and offsetting VAT and pushing your VAT into the, the future, in you know, theory. Um, and so I will be going over that and that will be a really interesting topic actually because, you know, where. Yeah, let me just go over this. So to start with, so let's get started. So this is my 2020. It's not my half year profits anymore. It's like full. Okay, I did a half year before. And you can go back and see the other videos actually. It'd be interesting. So I might actually link a series so you can sort of follow it. And I'm going to be doing, a, about to say, one and a half million pound on Amazon journey thing every month going over basically the same as this, but I'm going to be doing it monthly. So I'll show my January results. Um, but try to do it in a lot more detail so that you can get a, tr a better reflection of like the position uh, rather than just like blase information you know you can't really see much into. I'm going to be just breaking it down, maybe doing like a cash flow version and a PL so that you get to see the V8. I'll be talking about that VAT thing later. You get to see my actual position in terms of the cash, and then you get to see the if the month was a self contained month. I'll talk about more, more that in a sec. So I don't confuse it. So what I'm going to do here is just show you what I did. So I did 917,000 and a bit. And then my gross profit 
before V18. So gross profit actually includes V18, but we're, um, but the way I have to calculate it, I've got to do this first, and then I've got to work out my VAT, and that VAT is just literally all of the months added together. Well, it should be. This is where I get embarrassed. Come on, should do this. Yeah, it's in the percentage, but we can do this. We can do this. Anyway. British pounds, sixty-one. Yeah. So that's obviously just that. That's just the um, as if I sold. And bought everything in December, uh, but that's not. I'll show you a realist. I we'll keep talking about. I get, get excited. I want to share that part. Uh, then you want to see the expenses. So of course my prep has been crazy. So you get to see extortion that amounts. And that prep is only from June. So June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So seven months. But the first month or two wasn't crazy. It's put a couple of grand, you know, a month. Obviously, it's ramped up. And if you watch my Q, my previous video, which is the Q4 2020 video, where I just break down Q4, you'll see I'll talk about the prep side of things a little bit more. So you can jump on that video and have a look. Um, and as you, you know, I always add little bits of information, tidbits for people to take away, just food for thought, because it's always interesting. So my obviously my total expenses for the period is 41. Now, for the year, sorry, for the year. So you can start to see, you see, the good thing about this is that you can start to build a picture on that, you know, how much have I spent on keeping here? How much have I spent on this and that? It's like, have I ever used this service much? Or if I do, is it worth 750 quid a month? You know, should I get a full-time VA maybe and share them with another Amazon seller? Um, which is, I could, you could do it for 200 pound a month, uh, but they're an accountant, for example, and they're going to do everything, zero, they're going to be, you know, obviously you have to pay for zero, but they'll be doing all your accountancy, uh, weekly reports, profit and loss, and they'll be doing all of this, but really, really clean and nice, uh, making sure everything's perfect. Yeah, it might cost a bit more, but it's not much more considering the account probably doesn't do much, you know, but it gives you a nice picture. And it's like, well, 38 grand, if that was a year, that's too much. I need to get that down. Let's see if I can negotiate with the prep center and reduce it by 5%. You could go and work out what your 5% would be over a year. It's five grand. Well, you're happy to say five grand. See if you can work out five. They might say three because of the because of the business you're giving them. Because it's a lot of business, and you can just start to eke out and improve those uh, expenses. Because you can see here, I've, I've put the thirty percent. So the expenses here is thirty percent. Oh, it doesn't show. Oh, there is actually something here. I think. Of my yeah, so that obviously minus that is that. So obviously then all I've got to do is take off the expenses um, to get the figure, basically. And then my yearly profit is obviously including the 16 grand over here. It's in black, but cool. And then the interesting point, point, thing you've got to add on here is that, and I'll be doing a lot more this year of it, is that, you know, it comes up time and time again. I probably lost... Definitely in the summer, I lost two grand worth of chocolates because they expired and they, they expired because I thought, oh, I might as well sell these products all year. And I tried and then I didn't work. Two grand. Or buy, obviously buy parts. So in theory, you know, I've made that profit on these actions, but you're not also taking into consideration the losses that aren't related to this P&L. Things like, you know, if, if Amazon don't, disperse you sorry don't give you the, the right reimbursements all of that is a still a detriment that's that's more of a cash flow this is this, this is a the thing there's many different reports that don't all come together as one kind of thing you can't you probably do it but it'll take ages and it would be super confusing two seconds <coughs> it'll be super confusing and it'll take hours and it'll be very technical because you know, if in theory, if I've lost five grand, I say two grand a summer, uh, and bits and bobs through the you know the year, things have expired or whatever's happened. Maybe it's customer damage or defective. You know, all these costs of the unit that you're taking a hit for, returns, refunds, that does come into seller board. I use, um, well, you know, I, I I use a couple actually, but it's one of those. <coughs> it does take into consideration, but stuff like that that Amazon aren't, or software aren't taking into consideration, which is the expired products that you're having to recall and then you're taking the hit on that and that could be two grand four grand so in my mind i'm like ah the, the great thing and people say well how can you track that how do you know if amazon are reimbursing you this is a big one how do you know amazon reimbursing you everything they should be 
So I do obviously this little thing at my VA to do an infantry adjustment report and all that kind of thing and make sure they're paying back everything I can. But you don't know if that's everything. So, you know, you could take a contingency percentage of 5%. And Amazon at 5% or all reimbursements they're not. And you can take, you know, it's like bad debt. People, you know, people, people take contingencies for debts or uh, liabilities and that kind of thing, even though they don't always know what it is. Um, but it's just, it's just like a percentage that gives you a good indication because you can't, you know, a lot of time you don't actually know. Um, like with Amazon, you just don't know what they actually haven't paid you. For example, you just got to hope, do as much as you can, and hope that it's not high. So, for example, on this thirteen thousand, I could say. Well, I know that's, I could say it's, I actually made a hundred. I know that's being just like thirteen, more than thirteen percent, isn't it? No, less. It's about twelve, or a bit less. Um, but I could say, okay, I actually only made. I'm going to put a contingency, and you can put it in percentages here, of um, defective uh, slash expired products, five thousand, a percentage of something. You can you can obviously look into it and go well. How many products did I? You, every time you get a expired product, you can just track your reports that way. And obviously, build up a number, add these in to a yearly report, find a percentage, so on. You can keep doing that in as much detail, and then you can get a little bit refine this whole thing a little bit more, a little bit more, giving that closer representation of real profits because. That this is it. This is true. This is yearly profits on the sales. But what about the, the you know and, and and money that's gone out of the bank? Like you know, if you bought a laptop, you don't see that represented in here. But obviously, that's money getting you know. Say some I've I've, I've not had all my stock delivered. Um, but that isn't representing on the sales. It's nothing to do with sales. And so you've got to be careful that you know. Yeah, that might be my profit. But when people look in the bank and go, well, but where's that money? I haven't got one hundred thirty grand. I've only got eighty. Well, you know, obviously you've got to track, like, if you bought stuff in the last week, it's not at the prep center, what's at the prep center, what's at, you know, so many, so many places your money could be. But again, some of it could be in stuff that you, I had, I sent two grand of chocolates to my mum and said, have fun, about five, and I think I've done it again after this year. <clears throat> um, I just I'll forget, but I sent her, like, literally um, 500 boxes or different versions of chocolates, different, different things, different listings, different everything. Um. Obviously, because I can't send it to myself, I can't do anything. I'm in Lithuania, so <laughs> all fun, but you know, whatever. But all part, of the, all part of the game. Because, like, you know, in my mind, if that's say it's uh, eight grand, that I got, let's just be over the top. Let's go over the top, eight grand. Well, I'm paying eight grand for the reward of 105. Okay, well, that's to say, obviously, that isn't related to the sales. Okay, well, let's just say I take off 6,500 here, just to be an eight pound. I'm paying that for a 90 grand return. That's kind of how I see it, because if I didn't sell a lot of those products, I probably wouldn't do the sales, I probably wouldn't make the profit. So yes, there I could be a little bit more cautious, but then I wouldn't maybe make as much money when the opportunity is there because I'd be being more cautious. So it is just a strategy. It's like I might make 10 grand by selling these products, but I may actually pay six as a hit at some time in the year. So really I'm only making four net uh, because of that whole transaction has other elements to it, but none of that's shown. Enough of that rambling, but you get what I'm, you know, you get the understanding. And also, you know, it's very difficult to compare my PL, whatever this thing is, yearly profits to someone else's, because the way that things are shown is always different. Always different. You know, some people could be literally seeing how many units did I sell in December and go, I sent in, let's say I sold 8,000 in December. Well, a lot of those I would have sent in from November, but I sent in 10,000 in November. But 2,000 of those units in November, hasn't sold yet, so I will not include it in November's expenses as a as a as a form like a report form because the value attributed to those costs has not yet been sold. Very a little bit complicated, but not too bad. Um, and so things can just show up completely different depending on who's created them. I'm just trying to give as much like understanding of like that whole 360. It's going to be like one of those little helixes or whatever. But like you've got that atom in the middle and you've got those little speed. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Right, anyway, let's get on to this cash flow thing. So this is what you need to see. Ah, I've marked it up. No, I haven't. Yeah. Kinda have. Uh this it's got a change of colour. So you can see here that this is my 
actual payments per quarter. So obviously my you so you can see my have a obviously I'm good doing this yearly, like I said. Um my December my December, January, February are all with it within the same quarter, but I'm doing year. So I've obviously cut it off. So I've then broken down those two months looking at my accounting software found the VAT are li are liable for these months. Now what I really should do is just do it like this because so this is obviously payments, yeah? As in my liabilities, that's why, you know, all of the payments, liabilities that I've shown here. Oops. But, uh, so obviously it's red, but actually, if I actually look at just January and February, uh, self, like one month at a time, I would have reclaimed this much money. So I would be getting 799 because I'm obviously not, I didn't do hardly any sales, so like eight, 10,000 in January or something, or 12 in Feb. So obviously my sales are low, but I'm spending a lot to get in the stock, which is then going to be represented in sales and VAT later on. Um, and I paid here. So if you look here, the, the total here is 30, you can't, I don't know if you can see it under this little recording of my face, but it says 13,178. That's what I would have shown um, in the other tabs, but I only paid 8,742. Same with this, 8,624 total, five. Here, sixteen five hundred. I paid seven. I think I mentioned that one before, uh, or in the previous video. And you're thinking, well, how do I do that? Why? Why is it so different? It's because the cash flow realized VAT is different to what that month's self isolated um, thing is. Like I mentioned before, if you've got questions, you can always I can I can explain it better. It's very annoying to explain. Not as in not I'm not annoyed to explain. It's very weird to explain it uh, so what ultimately is that let's say i in march i have three thousand two hundred ninety two pounds that i have put i've got here in cash which is now due for march that's that's like i've, just, I've explained to you, you know like, like i've been going over or like this is just you know that month had that much vat that's due cool but this is what i do i go well number one i'll go i'm going to use that money to reinvest now to make more profits overall. So that's just one strategy I do. That doesn't show up in, in the BAT here because obviously that's profit, so that will show up in the profits and the sales. But what I, but, so, but that's just something I do do as I thought, I thought I'd add it in. But what I'll do is this is what I'll do. So I will, let's say at the, near the, in mid May, I see my VAT is, actually, can I use this? Maybe this little, yeah. So my, I can see my VAT. That will be, let's say it's the 20th of May. And I go into my QuickBooks or whatever I'm using, zero. And I see the VAT that will be due is this. And then obviously I'll minus my VAT on expenses. Fine. But that's still, you know, that this that won't be huge. Um, no, it can be with the prep. But in this period here, I don't even think I have prep center. No, I didn't. I didn't have prep center then. So you have, you obviously sort out all that, but then you've got a choice. This is what I do because I'm obviously looking to, I don't really want to pay out 13 grand or 12, whatever the amount comes to, because I'd rather, well, that's going to leave me in a detrimental cash flowing position because this year is, well, last year, <laughs> I'm pretending it's this year, you know, sales are going crazy. You want to be buying everything under the sun because you can really make a massive amount of, there's a massive amount of opportunity there out in the market. You don't want to be paying that and be in a, have no money in the bank and maybe not buy much for a week or two. You know, you want to be trying to offset, you want to be trying to keep that as long as possible to maximize this current market condition. You don't know how long that, you don't want to ride that wave as long as possible and offset costs as long as possible. Yeah. So what I'll do is come, you know, and I think this must've been around when I got the balance back loan, 50,000. And uh, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, um, but that's what I did. Um, and so now what I did is I had this 13,000 bill, or well, let's say that I knew I was, it was going to be paid. I got the balance back loan, let's say I got it on the 20th of uh, May. Like I just say I got it on that day and this is when I'm looking at that and I'm like, oh, I don't want to pay 13 grand. Yeah, but the 50 grand you could and you could have enough, but I want to, you know, I, I know that I can spend that 50 grand easily and I am more some, you know, and more. So I'd rather not. Um, because obviously if I can save anything, that can, that can now make profit. You know, if I can save two grand, well, that two grand that I don't pay for VAT now can then go on to, um, I can then spend that for next month and make profit. 
and then make profit the following month and then and gas in a compound over the year and then I can do it with next month's V8. You know, you can keep every month or every quarter, you can do the same thing. So that's four times a year that you can do this. And that, with that 50 grand, I could go out and buy all 50 grand's worth of 20% items, yeah? So I can go and basically just buy a lot of um, products that have to be 20%, not zero. And I can go and claim that the second that I buy that, I say I spend 50 grand one transaction, I can claim all that VAT, which is obviously 20% VAT, back in this return, as in the May mark, even though I haven't sold, I haven't even, I haven't even got the products yet. Because it, you know, let's say the transaction clears, you've got to have to make sure it's cleared in your bank on the 22nd. I can go, let's take that 20 grand, uh, sorry, let's take that 20%. Um, from that 50 that I've just spent and offset it against this VAT amount. Uh, and let's just do the calculation quickly because I always get confused. VAT, because I know that if you, it's not, sometimes it's not. If I put 50 grand, I just want to make sure I get it right. I don't want to, and you want to exclude 50, yeah, 8,000. Because obviously it's not, it's 20% on, that's actually what the bill, if you get, if you type in £41,666, 66p, add 20% on, you'll get 50 grand. Yeah, even though people go, oh, but what's 20% of uh, 50,000? It's 10,000. So that's not, it's, you don't go backwards, you have to go forward. So you have to find the amount that it is plus 20%. Uh, I think it's like divide by 0. 0.6 or something. Or what does it say down here? Anyway, whatever, whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> so you've got, and this is a good example. So. My bill is 13,178. We've got a good old calculator here. 178. And I can now reclaim in this same period 8,000. So instead of my bill being that 13 something, I'm minusing 8,333.33. Well, now my bill for this period is now, can you see this? £4,844. So I am now not, I basically got an extra £8,333.33 in my bank come. At the end of the month because I don't have to pay out. I pay my VAT now of 4,800. I now have 8,333 pounds. Well, let's get, you know, yes, I, I spent 50 grand and I, those sales at some point will create higher VAT for, because if, if it didn't spend that 50 grand by stock, then it would never sell. If it doesn't sell, my VAT, I wouldn't have to pay VAT. So obviously it, it pushes that, that, that bill, that, that cost in the future. Um, but that's okay because if you keep doing that forever, in theory, you can do it. You can keep doing it, and you, and that means that you can scale your business faster. Yeah, at some point you might have a big VAT bill, and I'll explain it in a second. Um, but you want to, but you're able to grow your business faster. So yeah, you're still going to have the bills, but you're able to do that in a year or two, not four years, because you're scaling faster. Yeah, you'll have the hit, but once you have the hit, you'll be in a better position than you would be if you slowly basically paid like one like, like the 13 grand that's you know like if you just put it in the bank and left it and then paid the 13 grand and not being in leveraging or strategic strategizing you would still have that you would you would you know you'd be doing a lot faster because you're scaling you get what i mean so what happens is obviously here but what if i so my december um amount is twenty two thousand three hundred and eighty nine, but it actually would be 38 grand if I had no purchases. So let's say I purchased nothing in December at all, because obviously it's, I don't really maybe need, I did. But let's say you don't. This is where the where the hit of the whole transaction uh, nets against each other. So it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be literally perfect. Um, but I'm not sure I understand. Sorry. Kids. Right. Um, it's never going to be perfect, but it, I'll show you how it can get close. So yeah, I'll say that. So in theory here, you I need to make sure this is a plus, this is a negative. I'll do it, I'll do it in a second. But my, if I just um, took the, the, the December sales and I just worked out the VAT, it's 38 grand. Obviously in this uh, December Q4 report thing that I showed in the other video, I'll, I'll obviously everything I purchased and go against, I'll put together. But what will happen if I, at some point, if I stop, let's say, let's say at one day I just stop purchasing. So at some point I stopped purchasing. Well, it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop selling. So 
at some point, if you stop purchasing, let's say it's, you just don't, you want to get out of business. And that's how I decided in December. Uh, obviously, this is really what happened, but well, that's still not what actually happened, but it kind of is. If I didn't buy anything in December at all, because I wanted to get out of business, liquid, get out, scare it. Um, I would have actually, I would have to pay 38 grand in sale, uh, in, in VAT, yeah? Because I'm not, I've got nothing to put against it. I haven't, I'm not purchasing anymore <clears throat> to offset the VAT to the future. So the future is now. That is the future, you know, that is where you pay it. But in the meantime, I'll be able to, you know, upscale my business, improve my sales, and potentially make more profits. Yes, the bill still comes, and it's an accumulated bill. It's even bigger, uh, as in it's, it's a larger amount in one go, that's what I mean, let's say. Um, but you're able to make more profit in that period, hopefully, not guarantee, no guarantees. Um, so what you can do here is you can go, okay, well, let's see what this would be. So that's 59 grand. Um, but obviously, I've made a little bit of money. So 59, 160. But then you want to minus off 799 and then minus off 843. So it comes to about a bill in the year of 57,500 pounds. Um, and by doing it the way I've shown you, it's 61876 so you kind of see what i mean it ends up and yeah it's not going to be exact because like there's lots of different things that happen and you, you might have you might have to liquidate stock because it doesn't sell or stuff expires you you know and you've got to so obviously not selling it you're buying it but you're not selling it and there's all those kind of things that happen and go on the stuff gets destroyed um so you don't you know but it's just showing you <coughs> so what was it 57 So, awesome. but you get what I mean. So you can now see that's happening. So for me, I will do the strategy that I've just gone over because it means that in the shorter term time frame, I can scale fast. And this bill doesn't have to. This bill can potentially be pushed forward and forward and forward and forward as long as you want, as long as you're scaling, as long as you're spending your money. If you decide, oh, I want to keep that money in the bank and you don't spend it, of course you're going to have a higher bill because if you've got 100 grand in the bank, you're like, nope, I had a good Q4 and I want to leave it in there and think about my options. Well, if you spent that 100 grand, you could offset like 20 something thousand or something, um, or all the profits that you've made or whatever you've done. You could, you could, you know, that's why that in here they, they owe me because I'm spending a lot, but I'm not really selling. Um, but that is just a strategy of VAT, and that's pretty straight. You know, it's kind of like a pretty obvious VAT strategy. And so that's what you really got to be aware of. For how I presented my data, I, I presented it as this to give you a more evenly distributed profit correlated to months. But by 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 my actual is different because of the strategies I've used, <clears throat> and and no one's you know, and by doing it this way as well, you know. Some people like to pay their VAT and be a bit more managed and less risky. And some people are happy to do it this way or a bit of both in between. Many different strategies. So I'm not going to carry on going over that, um, but that's just something to be aware of. So some people might actually pre present their P&L using this cash flow method to show what they actually pay in terms of VAT for a month. But they can't, you know, say it's December. My VAT quarter doesn't end until March, uh, February. So I don't know what this whole quarter will actually cost me in VAT uh, until it's cl until I close that quarter. So I can't even predict because I don't know what deals will come. I don't know how much I'll end up spending. So it, this can only be produced after the quarter's closed. And then I can either lump sum the quarter cost, the VAT bill, to, to the third month. Because it, you know, in theory, as of today, my bill would be 30 grand, let's say. But I don't know, tomorrow I might spend 20 grand or the month after I might spend 50 grand. So that, but at, as of today, it's the, a 30 grand bill. So it's kind of like, do you then just not, do you just say December and January have no VAT bill and the full bill, this is how you record it in a report, is you add it to the third month because there's no, you can't go anywhere else. That's when the, the VAT will be calculated in the end of the third month. So whatever the bill is at the end of the third month, you, you don't attribute that to that month as a cost for the three months. Can you get what I mean? <clears throat> I'm not going to go into it anymore. I'll end up boring everyone and it's 29 <clears throat> minutes in. And just something to take away. This is some piece of data. So I sold 82,125 
units. And that's just go equals that divided by this. That's not right. I always do it this way. Back to five. Just to see what my average. Okay, that's my yearly average sale price on Amazon. 1117. Gross profit margin, 21. Net profit, VAT liability on average um, using this, which is a bit of a better representation for averages and stuff. Otherwise, you can skew the data really, like, you know, you can see, you can skew that as being, that would be a high VAT liability month and that would be a low. Yeah, it might average out. It'd be interesting to see what that, that would actually bring with it being great because the numbers are still similar, so it might actually be okay. But these are things you have to play around with. My return rate over the years, 1.33%. A lot of that could be sellable again. A lot of it might not be. And my expense is about 30. So you might be like, that's quite high, 30%. Or is it not? What's the industry average? And all that. And then you start to refine the process and think, okay, well, I think I want to get that to 25 because everyone seems to say that is what you can get it to. Is it the prep? Is it this? You know, Can I do a deal with the prep center? Can I even uh, buy bulk in a prep center? send it to a prep center or buy maybe a container <coughs> send it to the prep center i know it sounds crazy and then stock it full of prep materials that i've bought and they use mine and in a year i say five grand because i'm buying a hell of a lot of, you know i'm buying a year of of prep materials up front or something lots of lots of strategies little you know bigger thinking strategies <coughs> all right that's enough for me any questions let me know um, I'm sure that is because I always it's a bit complicated, but hopefully you enjoyed it, got some entertainment out of it, and why not try to do this within your business this year, 2021, or, and or even more. Smash it. See you later, guys. Bye.